Suburban Sentinel here with a, another gear review. Uh, on the screen in front of you is my Stag Model 2T left-handed AR-15. I'm not going to be reviewing the rifle today, but an accessory, namely this Crimson Trace Model MV515 multifunction hand grip. This vertical foregrip, and I'll point it into the camera, has both a laser and an integrated weapons light. So to make it easier to see, I'm going to remove this from the rifle, and we'll get a close-up on the MV515 and go over it in detail. Okay, back to the now dismounted MV515. And Bella, the camera cat, is here to assist me as well. Uh, as usual, uh, I separate the reviews into three parts. Part one will be form, fit, and function, a general overview of the equipment and its operation. Part two is logistics, or what I call the illities, reliability, maintainability, durability, supportability and interoperability and part three which is probably the most important part is the potential uses for this item or in other words how does this piece of equipment earn its keep again this multifunction foregrip is made by the crimson trace company and I have no affiliation with Crimson Trace. I'm simply a retail customer of Crimson Trace and I purchased this MV515 about a year and a half ago with my own money, of course. And Bella is screwing up the works. Crimson Trace designed this little gizmo for the AR-15 rifle and it does incorporate three popular accessories for the platform, namely a vertical foregrip, a tactical light, and a laser, all in one unit. As you saw, the 515 mounts onto a Picatinny rail. All of the controls are incorporated into the unit. There are no external switches or wires. The 515 is made up of two independent modules, the laser module and the tactical light module. The laser module is available in both red and green type lasers and the tactical light is white only. You can use either the laser or the light or you can use the laser and light simultaneously. I'm not going to go too much into the specifications on the tactical light and the laser. Quite frankly, most of those specifications mean next to nothing to me. And I suspect that to most of us gun enthusiasts out there, they mean very little. I imagine that you would have to be a real tech person in the laser and or lightning industries for this stuff to really make any sense. I would much rather look at empirical data from using the unit rather than all these mumbo jumbo specifications from the industry. The unit is powered by two common CR123 type batteries and with the batteries installed the MV515 weighs in at about 10 ounces. Again, it mounts to a rail and the mounting is rock solid. My AR has Samson Picatinny rails and with the MV515 installed, there's absolutely no rattle or play between the rifle and the unit. The MV515 is installed, let's see if I can get, the, get it on camera here, with captive hardware. 
So it's very nice not having any loose parts to come off in the dark and send you on a wild goose chase. Plus the hardware itself can be screwed down with either a common socket or a screwdriver or flat edge of some sort. So the mounting is rock solid and very easy to do. The laser is adjustable for both windage and elevation using these two little Allen screws. Let's see if the camera will focus on them. Here and here. And Crimson Trace does provide Allen keys for that purpose. And that is a very easy adjustment to make from my experience. The ergonomics on the foregrip are, in my opinion, excellent. And I have medium-sized hands. I get a very good purchase on the foregrip, and it's very easy for me to reach the primary controls on the grip as well. There's not really finger grooves. There's one swale in the grip separating your index finger from your middle finger, and that seems to work. Unless you have massive size hands, one should be able to get all four fingers easily onto the foregrip. And, or two paws. <laughs> that kind of hurts, Bella. Rough texturing on the front and back of the grips. Let's see if I can get this on camera. Keeps the unit solidly in your hand even if when sweaty or wet. Let's see if I can get that rough texturing in. That's the front rough texturing and the rear rough texturing. The MV515's primary controls are fully ambidextrous, which I think is terrific being a lefty. The primary operating controls are these two buttons found on either side of the unit. The larger vertically oriented button controls the laser and the smaller horizontally, horizontally oriented button controls the tack light. Both the light and laser are programmable for different modes. There's a temporary on mode, which this unit is set up for, where you push the button and the laser comes on, you release the button, the laser goes off. Same thing with the tack light, push the button, light on, let go of the button, light off. Both of those can be programmed such that when you push the button, the laser or light will remain on until the button is pressed again. Note that the laser and light modules are independently programmable. So for example, one could set the tack light on the temporary on mode as this one is set up for and have the laser in the constant on mode or vice versa. In addition, both the laser and the light modules can be independently disabled which is handy if you're going to travel with the unit to prevent accidental activation of either the light and of the laser. One issue that I think deserves significant attention on this unit, besides the cap, come over here, is the setup of the primary controls. You'll see here that these controls, which again are ambidextrous, both sides, are not fenced. These are not regular pressure activation switches, which only require a minimum of force to activate. These are fairly stout pressure switches that require a significant amount of force to engage. These controls are very positive and very well made but they do require a fair amount of strength to activate. It seems that Crimson Trace designed the switches this way to allow for ambidextrous switch operation 
without a significant risk of accidental activation. I caution anyone with a limited amount of hand strength to try the unit out before purchasing same, just because you may find it difficult to operate the MV515. Those with limited hand strength may be able to operate the unit by kind of digging the tips of your fingers into the control buttons, but that requires changing your grip. And I'm not sure if that would work out so well. I have no real idea what the pressure activation parameters on these buttons happens to be. But if I had to venture a guess from a practical perspective, uh, uh, if you have trouble uh, slingshot racking a full-size pistol, I imagine you're going to have a great difficulty in operating this unit smoothly. Moving on to performance, let's take this unit out for a spin and see how it does in the real world. I'm going to leave the MV515 off the rifle for this little experiment just because I'll be outside and I don't want my neighbors flipping out if I'm running around with my carbine. So we'll do some real world empirical testing in both day and night conditions and both inside and outside of the house. All right, here I am at one end of the house, looking down the hallway, down the stairs into the family room. I think you can see the dog down there. There she is. But anyway, I'm looking at the far wall and the interior of the house is 64 feet stem to stern. It's a beautiful summer afternoon and we have a fair amount of ambient light coming in from outside. So that's 64 feet away, just as a point of reference. And I do have the unit in my hand and I'll light it up with a laser. Not hard to see, but as you can see, even in a fair amount of sunlight inside the home, uh, the laser dot is very visible during the day. Okay, here we are, same position inside the house. Again, looking at the interior of the home from stem to stern, about 64 feet. And this is as the hallway normally is in the middle of the night. You see that little light at the bottom of the screen is just a night light that gives a little bit of illumination to the stairs. So this is the near pitch blackness of what it would look like. And now we'll use the functions of the MV515. So you come out in the hallway in the darkness and hit the lights. And as you can see, there's more than enough light to see quite clearly to the other end of the house. So that's light. In the alternative, one can also use the laser and the laser dot is fully visible. Also, you can use both functions at the same time. So light and laser together. And there you have it for inside the okay, house. Okay, now I'm outdoors. It's still a bright and sunny afternoon, but our lot here is very well shaded. So there's not a whole lot of sunlight coming through. And you see that giant tree stump over there that's about 65 feet away and I do have the laser on but I certainly cannot see it from this distance at least not with this ambient lighting the turkeys are there observing all these goings on with great interest. On screen here is another tree. This is about 35 feet away and the laser dot does not show up on that tree at that distance either. 
All right, so now I moved into about 25 feet away from the same tree. And at this distance, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but the laser dot does appear. So it is useful, not in bright sunlight, but with decent ambient lighting. Here we are in bright sunlight, and I'm about eight feet away from that post. And anything beyond that, the laser is basically useless. I can see it uh, at this distance. I'm not sure it's appearing on camera. So it looks like six to eight feet in bright sunlight is about the best you'll get out of this unit's laser with brand new batteries. And of course the turkeys are still very much interested in what is going on. Okay, we're out in the backyard again at the same spot as the daylight shots. Again, looking at the same tree trunk and trees. And I, I'm again, I'm about 65 feet away from the big tree trunk. And we'll turn on the light. And I'm not sure this appears on camera, but at least from my perspective, the tree trunk is clearly visible. I'm not sure how well this shows up on camera, but the design of the light is such that there's a fairly narrow focused beam surrounded by a broader spill. And the broad spill essentially allows one to identify whether an intruder has two legs or four, and the center or primary beam uh, allows for positive identification. So we'll light up that tree 65 feet away or so again. And I don't know how well this appears on camera, but I can clearly see the tree trunk and the surrounding area. Now I'll light up the tree that's about half that distance away. Again, more than adequate power for positively identifying an object at that range. I'm quite certain that this will not appear on camera, but I would give an estimate as to the total effective range of the light with fresh batteries at not less than 250 feet. At very short ranges, uh, the light is pretty intense. There's a, uh, an old uh, fence about 15 feet away from me and I'll light that up. And that is quite clear in the, there's a fair amount of backscatter from the light. Okay, back to the tabletop. One performance parameter we have not really discussed is the run time. As a defensive accessory, uh, at least in my opinion, it's important to have reasonably fresh batteries in the unit at all times. So if I run this unit for any length of time, I'll switch out the batteries uh, to fresh ones uh, and I will change out the batteries once a year, even if the unit is not used at all. Let's move on to logistics or what I call the illities first of which is reliability. I don't have much data on the reliability of this unit. All I can say is that I've had it and been practicing and using it occasionally for about a year and a half, and I've had absolutely no malfunctions at all. I can say that I have a significant amount of experience with Crimson Trace products. I have a Crimson Trace laser on every one of my defensive handguns. And I have some other lasers from Crimson Trace, including this MV515. And I have not had any problems with anything made by this company. Uh, I am very happy with the engineering and the quality of materials and construction I've seen coming off their production line. And to me, they are a preferred manufacturer. Moving on to maintainability, uh, this MV515 requires minimal maintenance. Essentially, the only things that need to be done 
are the laser and light lenses need to be cleaned occasionally. Uh, I just use rubbing alcohol and a pencil eraser. That seems to work fine. And the batteries need to be changed. Battery changes are a snap. I won't do it on camera to save the airtime. The bottom of the foregrip comes off by pushing this small button in and sliding the bottom plate off, much like taking apart uh, a standard magazine. And the halves separate, revealing the batteries. And just install new batteries and reverse the procedure. It's a, about a two-minute deal. Very simple. As far as durability goes, I don't really have much data other than I could say I've had this one for a year and a half and it's been flawless and I anticipate that unless it's really abused, it should last indefinitely. That's just my experience. I don't really beat on my gear, but I don't baby it either. And given the level of quality materials and construction, I don't see any reason this should not last for many years. Uh, Crimson Trace's warranty is three years. Is that an indication that the light or the foregrip module will only last three years? I don't think so. Warranties are gamed in business. Some of the products that have the longest warranties are really crap. And some products with virtually no warranty don't need them. So I'll take that for what it's worth, but it does have a three-year limited warranty on the unit. Moving on to interoperability, or how well does this integrate with other systems? And I find interoperability on this unit excellent. First, it's very easy to mount on a Picatinny rail, again with the captive hardware and the ability to use a, a screwdriver or a straight edge makes that an easy process. More importantly, after the unit is removed and reinstalled, the MV515, in my experience, reliably returns to its zero. And that is a huge plus in my book because you can take the unit off, remount it on your rifle, and you're ready to go. Not having to fool around with uh, resetting the windage and elevation on the laser. Another high point for interoperability, in my opinion, is the batteries. Again, the MV515 runs on common CR123 batteries, which is also the same batteries used in a wide variety of tactical lights. As I said before, I changed the batteries in the 515 probably all too frequently, but that doesn't mean the money I spend on those batteries gets wasted uh, because I use other equipment that utilizes CR123 batteries, such as my everyday carry flashlight. This Surefire E2T, E2D as in Delta, Defender uses a CR123. So I'll remove them from uh, the MV515, put it in either this light or a variety of other lights I either carry or have in our vehicles. So having a common battery that's used in other equipment to me is a real strong point. Another factor in interoperability is that this particular model from Crimson Trace is what they call modular. Um, I don't really see it as modular because you can't buy the individual modules and put one together. What they mean is that the laser modules are interchangeable. This again is the red laser. If one wanted to swap out to a green laser, all you'd have to do is purchase the green laser module and take this white uh, 
correction, take this red laser module out. So if I were to summarize the advantages and disadvantages of the MV515, things I like are uh, first the quality of the engineering materials and execution, the performance in low to moderate lighting conditions, the ease of maintenance. I really like the fact that it's a single integrated unit and there's no external wires or switches. I like the rock solid mounting and its ability to return to zero and the use of popular CR123 batteries. Things I don't like about the MV515 include the difficulty associated with activating these pressure switches. My wife has a very hard time engaging those switches. Um, the unit, even though it's only 10 ounces, does throw off the balance on my AR-15. Uh, and finally, the cost. The street price on this red laser model is somewhere around $400. And that's a pretty steep price to pay. I think it's worth it given the build quality and the capabilities, but still it's a, a lot of dough for an accessory on an AR. Uh, if you wanted to opt for the green laser, and just for those unfamiliar, green lasers have an advantage over red lasers and that green lasers can often be seen from further distances and higher ambient lighting conditions. But the green laser model runs about $600 street price. So again, uh, these can be quite pricey. Moving on to the final portion of this review is an analysis of the best uses for this unit. Or in other words, how does the MV515 earn its keep? My understanding is that some military and law enforcement operators use the MV515 for close quarters battle, clearing houses, that sort of thing. Now, I'm not a law enforcement type, never was, and I've never been a soldier, never will be. But I do find the MV515 to be useful. My wife and I use the AR-15 and this Crimson Trace modular foregrip for home defense. Note that this is not our primary home defense weapon. The primary is a 12 gauge pump action shotgun. The AR is basically a backup gun. The MVF 515 really shines in low light and no light conditions and at very short ranges. And that's about ideal for defending either the interior of a home or the short area around a smaller property. Other than that civilian application, I don't really see much need for the MV515. I'm not a big fan of vertical foregrips in general. I'm not criticizing them, it's just a personal preference. The only reason I have a foregrip at all is for the light laser combo. But as long as my AR is staying at home and being used to defend the home if necessary, I'll certainly leave the unit on the weapon. If for whatever reason I was going mobile, with my AR-15, uh, I think I would leave the Crimson Trace vertical foregrip behind. I'd rather just mount a tactical flashlight and a scope ring or some type of simple mount on a side rail with a tail cap switch 
and not have a laser. But I do think the MV515 is a valuable tool for when something goes bump in the night at the old homestead. I would not recommend making the MV515 a high priority item for homestead defense. I think that most people would be better served by making sure that they were adequately armed with good basic long guns and handguns before getting any of the fancy electronic gizmos such as the MV515. That said, I think this unit does add value for the limited application. Uh, and if it's within your budget and everything else is already squared away, uh, I see no reason not to buy it if that's your preference. So that's my take on the MVF515, at least with the red laser version. I have not had an opportunity to handle the green laser version. And overall, I'm pretty happy with this unit. Until something much, much better comes along, this unit will live on my AR so long as it's being used in the application as a backup homestead defender. So thanks for watching. This is the Suburban Sentinel. Questions and enlightening comments are always welcome. Shoot safely, everybody.